Welcome to Weld.com. I had a viewer request about doing some oxyacetylene welding. Haven't done this in a while, old school stuff. It's kind of fun. I'm going to use a rod today with a gap in some eighth inch material. And I want to show doing the outside corner with the gap, and then I'm going to turn this over. And we're going to do the backside too as a fillet weld. So we try to get both these. The, the outside corner to me is kind of fun and it's easy to do. It, uh, it's the same manipulation. If you really want to get good with your TIG welding skills, maybe you should start with oxyacetylene because it'll teach you the proper movement of the molten filler metal and the filler wire manipulation. Um, speaking of TIG welding, I've got, a, I've got a cool trick for those of you that are having a hard time walking the cup and manipulating the filler wire. But today I want to use a, uh, an OT tip on eighth inch material. My pressures are set at three pounds of acetylene, three PSI. My oxygen pressure is set at four pounds of pressure. And uh, we're using a smaller series of torch, OT tip, plenty for this. I may use a hotter flame on the back side, but I don't think I'm going to have to change to a bigger tip. I, I, it's been a while since I've done anything like this for a fillet weld on the inside. So let me get my, uh, I'll probably use a dark shield on this. Let me get my gloves on. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Got my stuff on. Let's light up. Have a little fun. Want to? Kind of like sticking an electrode there. Can't get the torch lit. How about that? I want to use a neutral flame. I don't think we've discussed this before. There's three flames associated with oxyacetylene. Carburizing flame. See an unburnt feather of acetylene in there. A little turquoise job. A neutral flame where that is a I won't say it's a sharp cone, but it's, a, it's a, a cone that does not have, I mean, let me turn this just a little bit. Boom, right there, we're back to the carburizing flame with the unburnt settling. Right there is a neutral flame. And then the third flame associated with this is an oxidizing flame where we have an excess of oxygen in here. Now. Generally, most everything we're doing is with a neutral flame. There are times when I'm cutting that I will purposely use a carburizing flame. And it's generally when I'm cutting something with a lot of, has a higher carbon content to it, sometimes on rust. Um, Sometimes when it's got some alloy content to it, it just tends to make a softer cut. It looks very strange, but I'm telling you, it works way better. Very rarely do I ever cut with an oxidizing flame. However, I will use an oxidizing flame to move metal. I'll cut bolts, cut welds with it. So a couple of ways to hold a torch. You can hold it up over the top, or you can come underneath and hold it like a pencil. Uh, you know, whatever's comfortable for you. This is not because I'm fighting my torch with my leg. Let me reroute hoses here and see if we can't get comfortable. All right, I'm using a 1 16th filler wire. It's an RG60, just a general purpose uh, gas, gas welding rod. This has just turned into a liquid here. And if I did have this in an oxidizing flame or my parent metal was not clean, I would have more of a sparkle show going on here. I'm sure some of you that have oxyacetylene welded be welding along here minding your own business and all of a sudden this pond just explodes, pops, you get a high-pitched whistle going in your torch. 
That is a burn back and you need to shut it down immediately. You also probably need to clean your tip. By warpage, this is closing itself up. Again, we're gonna weld the back side. Getting a little radiant heat off of that flame pointing toward my right hand. Got a little ripple pattern to it. It's not the best. It's smooth, it's welded. <clears throat> not something I do every day, but got to pick it up every now and then. Let me go quench this off and I'll come back and I want to, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't quench it off. Let me, let's take a look at this side. I told you that we were going to weld both sides of this. Okay. Right now I can't. And I'll tell you why, even though I clean this material, and cleaned it real good with a flapper disc and got into bright, shiny metal. I mean, I cut the mill scale off of it. I now have this flaky stuff on the back side here. Okay. If I tried to make a weld on the back side, I wouldn't have much fun because of this stuff here. It's gonna float around, it's gonna create that sparkle show. It rejects the wetting properties of the weld pool it's just not cool okay i need to go quench this i need to hit it with a wire wheel and i will probably i may have to stick a grinder to it i don't know i need to get this stuff off of here because you can't weld over the top of it material needs to be clean let me go quench this off i'll be right back i quenched this part off and i went ahead and took a wire wheel and and I'm looking at it, ah, you know, I know what I did before with this flapper wheel and had it sanded. You can see that the weld has penetrated. I thought it was kind of closing up a little bit, but it did penetrate all the way through. Uh, 1 16th wire, we were melting along there. I didn't do anything to this side. So actually it was like this going up. So got a nice little button effect up here at the very top where the weld pool's kind of solidified and I got out of it too soon. Let's leave it like that and experiment and we'll go back in here and we'll light the torch and we'll see if we can lay this rod and get this fillet weld to fuse in here. It's going to be a little different, I know, because now we've got more heat back in a corner and it's, it's just the pool doesn't want to move as well as it does on that outside. So let's light up here and see what happens. Come on, move, let's go. We're stalling out here. I'm not getting the not getting a good flow. Really cooking some oxides here. Torch angle is uncomfortable for me. Yeah, this is kind of ugly here.
not flowing very good at all. A little undercut wash. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to add filler wire and then make it move forward. And I really think my material is just crusty. I really think that's what it is. A little sparkle show going on here. So, I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to go clean this material. I'm going to hit it with a grinder this time, see if we can't get it a little better flow. Be right back. I went ahead and ground this out clean. It wasn't, <clears throat> it wasn't flowing at all. I think I've got enough tip as far as getting in here for a, for a fillet weld. I did notice that it, I was putting so much heat in there, but things were so crusty that it wasn't moving anywhere. I actually remelted the backside just a little bit. I, you know, that was going to happen. So I've set this up off the table now. Maybe that'll help. I'm going to go with just a slight carburizing feather because I don't want that scale to reappear. Mm, I hope this works better this time. Kind of rocking along here. I'm pointing this torch forward to to get my flame out ahead. But when I add rod, I'm going back into the pool to help it expand. Kind of a slow process, for sure. Fillet welds have never been fun for me on oxyacetylene. But I do like melting stuff on the outside corners. Modified lip, use a piece of material and use it as the filler metal. That's always kind of fun. That's really pretty fast, too. <clears throat> I'm going to go down through here and... It's wide in a couple places. It's concave. I'll leave the end of that just like it is. Well, that was kind of fun. Let me go cool this off. I'll, I'll hit it with a wire wheel so we can see if there's anything in it, bug holes or anything like that. I don't, I don't think there is, but let me go cool this off. I'll be right back. Welcome back. I cooled this off. I went over and I hit it with a wire wheel. Also, there was quite a bit on the back side, on the outside of that corner joint that we did originally. Man, it looked rough. It looked rough. It looked like I remelted and rearranged everything, but I didn't. A wire wheel did as well, and it's smooth. It looks like the original ripple pattern. So what's happening is we're just pulling all this flaky 
stuff away from, you know, it'd be like the mill scale. I had a little bit of undercut on the top side, which I was kind of expecting, and I, I couldn't get rid of that for some reason. I would, you know, if I'd, I did this a bunch, I'd probably go for a bigger tip, bigger wire, and try to go faster. Um, you know, the other thing that we could do is, is preheat the whole thing, the whole general area, and come back into it with a little bit different angle. Again, you know, it flowed in okay. It's just, you know, if you were asked about some old school oxyacetylene, the outside corner joints are really cool. You can make a, um, a kind of a modified joint where you're actually melting a piece of the material and, and using it as filler metal and make a homogeneous outside corner. And those are kind of really fun. They go quick and you can actually put a ripple pattern in them and everything, they're cool. So I hope this helps. Uh, viewer comments, man, come in and some of you probably do this all the time. I know there's some, some artists out there that, that do oxyacetylene. I have actually used oxyacetylene for repairing a piece of artwork here in, here in Arc City, Kansas. It was a, a, a piece that the city owns, I believe, and it was a, oh man, I remember this thing when I was a little kid coming up here. So it's been out in the weather. It's been exposed for a long time and the base had rusted away. And we had a, a, an art teacher here that somehow was in cooperation with the city on doing some projects for his art students. But I was the one that ended up fixing this thing. And I remember sitting in here in the weld shop, oxyacetylene this base to build it up. It was kind of weird at first because it was real crusty, but once we got past that, it started welding beautifully and we added some a st substantial amount of material into the base and rebuilt everything and made it look exactly like it was done originally. And I know it's still up because I just drove by it the other day. So a beneficial process. A lot of people don't want to use it anymore. They're, you know, they're stuck on TIG or they're stuck on MIG or something, but <coughs> I still teach it. I think it's cool. I think it's very beneficial. Again, I hope this helps. Um, make sure you subscribe to the videos. New videos come out every Monday. Bob Moffat with Weld.com. Thanks for watching. Really doesn't have that much to it. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Felt like Bill Dance there for a second. You need to get a, an intro like Bill Dance. Whew.